All right. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Cool. Cool. Build your own function. Most of the essential theory dealt in the previous article. This article provides practical experience here. Um, you'll get to build, practice building your own custom function. Along the way, we'll explain some useful details of dealing with function. Here's some prerequisites, assuming HTML and CSS. Now we did all the previous articles. Uh, the objective is to provide some practice in building a custom function and explain a, form, a few more useful associated details. So associated or active learning, let's build a function. The custom function we're going to build will be called display message. It will display a custom message box on a web page and will act as a customized replacement for the browser's built-in alert function. We've seen this before. Let's just refresh our memories, type the following into the browser's console, any page you like. I'm just going to call this. Sorry. Yeah. Cool. The alert function takes a single argument, uh, the string that is displayed in the alert box. Try varying the string to change the message. The alert function is limited. You can alter the message, but you can't easily vary anything else, such as color, icon, or anything else. We will build one that will provide that will prove to be more fun. This example, this example should work on all modern browsers fine, but the styling might look a bit funny in slightly older browsers. We recommend, we recommend you doing this exercise in a modern browser like Firefox, Opera, or Chrome. Opera's still a thing, right? I'm sure it is. Uh, cool. All right, cool. I'll just jump over. Uh, to begin with, let's put uh, together a basic function. Uh, for function naming conventions, you should follow the same rules as variable naming conventions. This is fine, as uh, you can tell from the part. Function names appear with parentheses after them and variables don't. So we will start accessing the function start HTML and making a local copy. You'll see that HTML is simple, the body contains just a single button, and we've also provided some basic CSS uh, to style the custom message box in an empty script element to put your JavaScript. Just a button. All right. So we have that. All right. Next, add the following script inside the script element. So that's the function display message. Cool. We'll start off with the keyword function, which means we are defining a function. This is followed by a name that we want to give our function, a set of parentheses and a set of curly braces. Any parameter that we want to give to our function goes inside the parentheses 
and the code that runs when we want to call the function goes inside the curly braces. And then finally, we'll add this code into curly braces. Dope. Feeling, yeah, we're probably going to do Cool. This is quite a lot of code to go through. So we'll walk you through bit by bit. The first line uses the DOM API function called document.querySelector to select the HTML element and store a reference to it in a variable called HTML. So we can do things with it later on. So var HTML equals document.querySelector and it's an HTML element. And I guess if it was a class, it'd be a period, if it's an ID. Hashtag, octopus, whatever it's called. Uh, cool. The next section uses another DOM API function called document.createElement to create a div element and store a reference to it into a variable called hem. This element will be the outer container of our message box. Uh, we then use another DOM API called element.setAttribute to set a class attribute to our panel uh, with the class value message box. Uh, this is to make it easier to style the element. If you look at the CSS page on the page, you'll see that we're using a message box class selector to style the message box and its contents. So, okay, that's probably. Message box, position, include, top left, all that fun stuff. Cool. And finally, we call a DOM function called node.appendChild on the HTML variable we stored earlier, which nests one element inside another as a child of it. We will specify the uh, panel div element as the child we want to append inside the HTML element. We need to do this uh, as the element we created won't just appear on the page on its own. We need to sp specify where to put it. So var panel create element panel dot set attribute class message box and then append it to panel. The next two sections make a use of the create element and append child functions we've already seen to create two new elements, a P element and a button element, and insert them in the page as children of the panel div element. Uh, we use their node.text content property, which represents the text content of an element to insert a message into the paragraph and an X inside the button. This button will be what needs to be clicked, uh, activated, when the user uses the close message box. Cool, cool, cool. Bar message, create element. P message dot text content. Uh, we'll change it to this is a message box. And then we uh, append the child message that P into the panel. Close button dot human dot create element. Button, we add or we change the text content to an X and we append it to the panel div. Uh, finally, we use the global event handlers dot on click event to make it so that when the button is clicked, some code is run to delete the whole panel from the page to the page to close the message box. Briefly, the on click handler is a property available on the button or in fact any element on the page uh, that can be set to a function to specify uh, what code to run when the button is clicked. You'll learn more about these in our later events. 
that we're making the onclick handler equal to an amount of this function, which contains the code to run when the button is clicked. The line inside the functions is uh, no dot remove child DOM API function to specify that we want to remove a specific child element of the, of the HTML element. And in, in this case, it's the parent div. So we're just removing the whole thing on click of the close button. Uh, basically, this whole block of code is generating a block of HTML that looks like so and is inserting it into the page. So, cool. Uh, that was a whole lot of code to work through. Don't worry too much if you don't remember exactly how every bit works right now. The main part we want to focus on is the function structure and usage, but we wanted to show something interesting for this example. Uh, does anybody have any questions specifically? I know this is all like kind of fairly new in the sense that we've used a lot of like DOM API stuff that I'm sure some people have used and some people haven't. Yeah, it pretty much for the most part makes sense. I mean, thankfully, yeah, most of most of the attributes are pretty straightforward. They're, not, they're pretty Englishy, which is great. Cool. All right, calling the function. Uh, you got, uh, you now got your function definition written to the script element just fine, but it will do nothing as it stands. Uh, try including the following line below your function call to call it. Okay, so. The garbage. There we go, that was weird. Hmm. Cool. All right. This line evokes the function, uh, making it run immediately. When you save your code and reload the browser, you'll see a little message box appear uh, immediately, only once. Uh, we are only calling it once after all. Uh, now open the browser developer tools on the example page and go to the JavaScript console and type the line uh, again in there, and you'll see it appear again. Bam. Cool. Uh, so this is fun. Uh, we now have a reasonable function that we can call anytime we like. But we probably want it to appear in response to a user and system action. In a real application, such as a, uh, such a message box would probably be called in response to new data being available, or an error having occurred, or the user trying to delete their profile. Are you sure you're about this? Uh, or the user adding a new contact and the operation completely uh, completing successfully, et cetera. Uh, in this demo, we'll get the message box to appear when a user clicks on the button. Delete the previous line uh, that you have. Three. Number four, next we uh, will select the button and store a reference uh, to it in a variable. So add the following line of code uh, above your function definition. There's my display message. I will add button, which is cool. And then finally add the following line below the previous one. Works on me. Cool. In a similar way to our close button on click uh, line inside the function, here we are calling some kind of code in response to a button being clicked. But in this case, instead of calling an anonymous function containing some code, we are just calling our function name directly. Try saving and refreshing the page, and now you should see the message up here, message box appear when you click on the button. Yep. You might be wondering why we haven't included the parentheses after the function name. This is because we don't want to call our function immediately, only after the button has been clicked. So if you try changing the line to adding this parentheses, saving and loading, you'll see that the message box appears without the button being clicked.
Alright, uh, the parentheses in this context are sometimes called function invocation, invocation operator. Uh, you only use them when you want to run the code function immediately in the current scope. In the same respect, the code inside the anonymous function is not run immediately as it is inside the function scope. If you try the last experiment, make sure that you undo the last chain before carrying on. Done. So, improving the function with parameters. As it stands, the function uh, is still not very useful. We don't want to just show some the same default message every time. Uh, so let's improve our function by adding some parameters, allowing us to call some different options. First of all, update the first line of the function. So display message. So we will add two parameters, which is message text and message type. Cool. Now when we call uh, the function, we can provide two variables values inside the parentheses to specify the message to display in the message box and type uh, the or and the type of message it is. To make use of the first parameter, you know, update the following inside our function. So message.com. Here, message.text context will be set to message.text. Uh, last but not least, uh, you will now need to update your function call to include some updated message text. Change the following line. Okay, cool. So button click, on click. Oh, is it this one right here? Yeah. So instead of that, this function. Oh, I see. So we're doing display. Send a message. Who is Cool. If we want to specify parameters inside the parentheses for the function we are calling, then we can't call it directly. We need to put it inside of an anonymous function so that it isn't the immediate scope and therefore isn't immediately called. Uh, now it will not be called until the button is clicked. Reload and try the code again, and we'll see that it worked just fine, except that now. You can also vary the message inside the parameter uh, to get a different message inside the box. Dope. Cool. All right. Uh, let's see. A more complex parameter. On the next parameter, uh, this one is going to involve slightly more work. We are going to set it so that depending on what type on, on what the message type parameter is set to the function will display a different icon and a different background color first of all download the uh, the icons cool 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 i'm just going to use this because this is technically yep this is technically a thing So, warning in chat. Save them to a new folder for color icons in the same location as your HTML file. Don't need to do that. Uh, next, find the CSS inside your HTML file. We'll make a few changes to make your way and make way for the icons. First, update message box. 
width to 242 pixels. Oh, failed. Two pixels. Uh, next, add the lines inside message box P. All right. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. And back to JS. Now we will add the code to a display message to handle displaying the icons. Um, add the following block and just above the close curly braces of, uh, and add the following block just above. I will replace see, I will replace icons with the actual URL which should work. I don't know if you are actually. I guess we're about to find out. Here, if message type parameter is set to warning, the warning icon is displayed and the panel's background color is set to red. If it is set to chat, the chat icon is displayed and the panel's background is set to aqua blue. If the message type parameter is not set at all or something different, uh, then the else part of the book comes in play and the paragraph is simply given the default pattern, no icon, uh, with no background uh, panel color set either. This provides the default state if no message type parameter is provided, uh, meaning that it is an optional parameter. So let's test our update function by trying to update the display message call from here to here. Take these two. So actually, It's actually calling them on top of each other. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Wonder. Yeah, I think they wanted you to test each line separately. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I just saw, I just saw like the, yeah. All right, so that works. And that works, cool. You can now see how useful or not so a uh, little function has become. If you have trouble getting an example of work, feel free to check the code against the final version. There, that's for help. Cool, conclusion. Congratulations on reaching the end. This article took you through the entire process of building up a practical custom function uh, with, with a bit more work could be transplanted into a real project. Uh, in the next article, we'll wrap, wrap up functions by explaining another essential related concept, return values. All right. Um, I guess we can switch off again. I'll read the next section. Okay. Uh -oh.